Inside this frame, hydraulic actuators operated by a team of engineers push and pull the new composite payload carrier, testing its ability to withstand the stresses of launch and re-entry. Based on the results from the thousand strain gauges placed on the carrier, it passed. In the electromagnetic interference test chamber, radio waves are blasted at the instrument to see if they will disrupt its operations. The instruments are also tested to see if they produce any radio waves that could interfere with other instruments or systems. This is the space environment chamber. Inside this enormous tank, spacecraft and instruments like the new Wide Field Camera 3 experience the harshness of space. The air is pumped out to simulate the vacuum of space, and then the real testing begins. This chamber can heat to a blazing 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and then drop to minus 310 degrees Fahrenheit. In here, the spacecraft must endure the huge temperature extremes it will experience in orbit, as it travels from full sunshine to the darkness of Earth's shadow. A typical test can take many weeks. One of the most notorious examples of communist disinformation appearing in the U.S. media, Dan Rather reported in a newscast on March 30, 1987, that a Soviet publication had charged that an American military laboratory had developed the virus that caused the AIDS epidemic. Rather had been snared in a Soviet active measures campaign that involved the use of Soviet front groups, forgeries, and disinformation. On the CBS Evening News on July 30, 2001, however, Rather aired a story related to Soviet active measures. In 2001, Dan Rather aired a story related to Soviet active measures. He acted as if he had a big scoop, saying, Newly released FBI documents obtained by CBS News reveal a widespread domestic spying and intelligence operation. Listen to what Rather says. Continuing with his quote, Rather says, thousands of ordinary Americans were under surveillance throughout the 1980s. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Mr. Rather. But you're not, are you? Because you claim that the FBI monitored senior citizens, congressmen, and even a Catholic priest whose only crime, according to Rather, was that he wanted to improve the world. You sack of scum, Dan Rather. You filthy sack of scum. Rather said these individuals appeared in the FBI files because the Bureau was monitoring Soviet active measures or influence activities directed at Americans. He even cited one Soviet forgery, a racist flyer supposedly from the Ku Klux Klan, designed to disrupt the 1984 Los Angeles Olympics. It would have been appropriate at this point to mention the Soviet AIDS disinformation, AIDS, as in the AIDS virus, AIDS, that rather had helped spread in 1987. That story, which rather helped spread, had a much bigger impact than the phony KKK flyer. But that would have been embarrassing for Rather. Rather didn't provide the context for understanding the FBI program except for a brief interview with a retired FBI official, David Major, 
who said Cold War tensions and hostilities between the U.S. and the Soviet Union justified the surveillance. Quote, espionage then and today is very real and active measures, manipulation of public opinion was very real at that time, according to David Major, retired FBI official. 